Power BI has loads of visuals that you can choose from and loads of formatting options within them. In this video, I'm going to cover the main visuals from my perspective and key formatting things for each one. Uh, it took me a while to get here to figure out exactly what I like and don't like about the formatting, but I'm going to cover it in this visual. We're going to look at axes charts, um, also known as Cartesian charts, bar charts, column charts, whether you've got small multiples and then area or line charts and waterfall charts. Uh, also a funnel could be considered a Cartesian chart. It's kind of on par. And then a ribbon chart, which is kind of a Power BI only one, but I quite like it. And then we're going to cover different types of cards, card and multi-row cards. We're going to cover pie and gauge charts, map charts, tables and matrices, which are slightly different. And then we've got um, kind of tree maps and slices. So my name is David Benam and I have tons of videos on Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace and I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you wanna see more things like this. All right, so I'm gonna go through them quite fast in this video. So maps can get quite confusing. The defaults I don't like, it looks like this. It's too colorful, it has too many labels in it. So I'm going to start with this, copy and paste, and we're going to amend it. Now, if you are going to have something in legend, only put something with two options. In this case, gender has two options, male and female, but don't do it for more things. Otherwise it gets too tricky. Now, I tend to turn on the category labels and turn off the show labels. So now it's much, much cleaner. Then I don't like so many colors. It interferes with my graphic design. So I will choose something with just a grayscale, which is either grayscale or if you're on a dark background, then dark looks really good. It looks like this. And finally, I will go to the bubbles and I'll make them bigger. Um, as long as they don't overlap, it's fine. I think that is a good way to do the bubbles. So you also have in controls, you can have the lasso button. If you turn that on, then someone can click on that and say select one or multiple things like that to filter the other charts. Uh, the other things I tend to keep as is, I don't like the zoom buttons. So that's for this type of chart. The filled map chart is a little bit trickier to use. So if you click on it, then you need to say the country. So it needs to be entire regions, uh, but it will put them as the same color unless you go into the fill colors and you change it with FX. This will open up conditional formatting. So I will say, for example, sales. There are just two countries in, so I'm just going to have lowest and darkest, press OK, and that will show it to me like this. Annoyingly, at the moment of making this video, you can't have the legend showing up here. Um, I'm sure that will be added soon, but the other features that I do are the same. So if you want to take the other features, then you can use the Format Painter and apply it there. Uh, notice that you can't have the titles, so you do need to have the labels in this case to show it. Waterfall charts. So these are amongst the trickiest to use. The default looks like this, which isn't great. So if I want to create a waterfall chart, I'm going to have city in breakdown, I'm going to have year in the category, and I'm also going to have sales in Y axis. So I will show it to you like this, which isn't great, um, a few reasons. So firstly, you want to clearly define your different colors. Total and increase are too similar. So I'm going to go to columns and I'm gonna to choose total to be purple. Next up, I don't like it when things don't start at zero. So in X axis, in Y axis, sorry, I'm going to do a minimum of zero. And next up, uh, we're going to change the other. So what does other mean? In breakdown, you can say the other can mean it just has two and the rest is grouped into other. I quite like that feature, but a waterfall chart is really the most useful when it's only got a start point and an end point. So that's why we need to add filters. If you go to filters, we're going to go to year and the default is advanced. We're going to choose basic filtering. We're going to just tick on these two. There you go, just start, finish, and everything that happened in between. So this is how I tend to choose to use a waterfall chart. This is the best way that I find to use them.
So things that you should avoid are down here, and we're going to look at how to fix them to things that are bad and why they're bad. So firstly, you should always be able to read the titles. Annoyingly, the default isn't that, but click on there, go to the Y axis and change this max area width. This is how you do it and adjust it so you can read everything. Um, nextly, don't have the axes, numbers, and the data labels. They only do the same thing. So go to, if you have this one, then if you have the data labels, then switch off the X axis like this. Uh, you also want to sort your charts. So that is done through these three dots, not through the format pane. You want to sort either um, by the number from top to bottom, if there is a logical order. The only exception really would be a date chart, um, usually, where here you don't want to sort it from big to small, obviously. You want to sort this by quarter, and then make sure it's ascending rather than descending. So when you do have bar charts, you can also do this with multiple dimensions. For example, like an agenda, and it can look like this. If you do that, then you do get this option for total labels, which is quite nice. I would usually only have one and not both, and then it would show them over here, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that is one way to do it. The other way to do the same thing, if I copy and paste, is if you drag gender into small multiples. So small multiples means there's multiple charts with the same thing. Um, if I give it some more breathing room, this is how it looks. Although I would recommend changing this to be both in the one column. So you do have a grid where you can say this is going to be just one column. And this is how it would show. You have additional features that you can add and, and special things for the title of the small multiple as well, if you are to use that. They can be nice. Uh, you can have a border like this. Also think about your sorting. With small multiples, you do get a, an extra sorting option as well. So um, next thing is don't do this. Uh, Personally, I find this really confusing. It's okay if you have just male and female or two over here, but avoid this. Avoid where you have too many because this can get confusing. Uh, you don't know what's prioritized, what's top and what's bottom. I prefer this, which is a ribbon chart. It's a little bit um, out of the ordinary, but it does give you the prioritization. And is, if you hover over parts, then it can tell you how things have changed, how things have been reprioritized. So what's gone up, what's the ranking change, etc. And I do like that. The, the highest one is the one that's ranked number one. So to do that, just click here and choose the ribbon chart, which is this one. And the default things I tend to change are in ribbons, where I would go for the spacing. I like to have three, and I like to have higher transparency and border on. I find this one looks the best. So this I find is better than using this kind of chart. This funnel chart is the only real other type of sort of bar chart apart from the combos. And this is essentially a centered bar chart, but there is this conversion rate label where if they're sorted, then you'll get 100% on the top and the lowest one will get you the percentage of what that is. That's really the only difference with these charts. As you can see, there's fewer things you can do with them. So next, let's look at line charts and area charts. So you have three different types. Um, this is just this, but you have a filling inside. That's basically the, the difference, and this one stacks them on top of each other. So here, I'm going to copy that and paste that. Always sort them. As I said, sorting is really important. I really like these zoom sliders. They allow you to zoom in and out. Um, in order to do that, you click on zoom slider. So this is the default. If you turn it on, I don't really like the Y axis. I tend to do it just for the dates. I think that it makes more sense for that. And what's really nice as well now is you can have these. These things are called series labels. So the legend would look like that, but it's better to use the series labels. So turn that off and throw on your series labels like this. It does get confusing if these two are very close together. Uh, so you do need to do that. And another interesting option in lines is you can do stepped. So well, let me show you the difference. They are kind of like that versus stepped is like this. Um, other options are pretty standard, what you might expect. I'm not going to go through those. But stepped is an interesting one that's actually not very easy to do in Excel, for example. Neither is series labels, as it happens. You can also change the uh, transparency here. So... If you are going to have donut charts or pie charts, avoid having it with too many categories. 
In my opinion, two is the maximum. Only have it with two. Um, other people can say have it up to four. Do not have it up to four. If I switch this to be a bar chart, you're going to see how much cleaner it is and how much more obvious it is what's bigger than what versus this one where you, you're not sure how these two are related, what's bigger than what. It's just not as good. So apart from how to, how to choose the fields for a pie chart, let's say that we wanted to have gender by sales. I am okay with having it like this. I think this is fine, but I tend to go into data labels and I choose all data labels. I like to have all of these, but you don't need the 0.67%. Just go to values and choose percent decimal zero. Very, very rare that you actually need those. Um, so don't bother adding it. Um, other things you can do, I tend to also like going to slices and making it a bigger radius. So it's a, a, a slimmer chart like that. Note that a pie chart is the same as this, just without the hole in the middle. The gauge, the gauge is something that people tend to get wrong a lot. They tend to just put one category in like this and not think about how that might work. If you see it, it just puts a line down the middle, which is completely useless. If you want to use this, you need to have a maximum value. So here we've got female spectators. And if we want the maximum value, that's going to be all spectators. So put that in there. Um, then you can manually add these things in here. You can go to gauge axes and type over this. I almost never put anything in minimum. Zero is usually what I want. But maybe, for example, 5,000 would be the target value, and I would put that there. But note that that gets quite confusing. It removes the target if you uh, filter it, which might be fine, might be only a target for total. Uh, so that is one way to do it. The other way to do it is to have it for something that is only a percentage. So if something's a percentage, then Power BI is smart enough to I uh, know it's zero to 100, 100%, but if it is, then you don't need it to say it. It's the default you want to take off, which is take out the data labels, then it's just 78%. So this is how I would say to use Pi and gauge charts. So let's look at city by sales and by gender. It does automatically put it into a map chart because that's a geographic location. I'm going to make that into a table and it looks like this. Let's put sales at the end. Uh, then I'm going to just make it bigger. Uh, you can either do that using style presets, which can be quite nice, like sparse. This is one of the main things that I tend to do. But generally, I like to go to size and global font size. I'll make that 11. There we go. Now we have a bit more breathing room and you can see what I'm doing a bit better. <laughs> The other one that I like to do is the padding adjustment. So if I make that into eight, notice that the sparse one already has quite big padding, but the default one does not. So if I go back into default, then it's not very sparse, but I like to do those formatting options in particular. So this is essentially a table. Um, another couple of things I like to do is I like to do conditional formatting. So you can do it in a couple of ways. If you go to this pane, you can go to sales and you can use conditional formatting. And let's do background color. Does it like this? I'm going to add a middle color. So it just makes the lowest in red, the highest in green and everything else in between differently. Another new feature you can do is you can add a spark line. So here I can do this for across month, for example. Press create. And I get sales by month. I can rename them like this, like sales trend, for example. And then I have some special sparkline options. So over here, I can choose the width or what I really like is the marker, say the highest and the lowest. Those are the typical things that I would tend to change. So um, that is typical for a table, a matrix. Let's copy and paste it and let's see how it is slightly different for a matrix. So this one, I'm going to click on this icon to make it a matrix. And where this is a bit different, um, I don't need the sales trend, even though you can have that, is you have it in rows and columns like you would in a pivot table in Excel. 
And I'm also going to add a country because you can have a hierarchy in this kind of list as well. So here we can have the country and then we can subdivide it. But I like to have it like Excel. If I click on this, uh, let me go back to minimal preset. But then I want to have the icons. So if you can't find something, just search for it. I like these icons that you can press plus or minus to expand, which is what we see when we have Excel. Uh, you can also choose what to do with subtotals in a matrix. So I can search for that column and row subtotals. Um, I can turn those off or I can put them underneath or other things as well. Uh, there are in certain instances, if you have multiple measures, you can also choose to show them in rows instead of columns like you can in Excel. All right, so that's these two visuals. Let's move them out the way uh, and then do some more. So cards are probably the simplest types of visual. So this is essentially just a measure. So I'm just going to do sales there. And... There are different things that you can do. In general, you have the visual and the general tab. So for each visual, you have the general tab with the title, backgrounds, borders, things like that. That will be in this tab. The visuals tab is just things that only apply to the visual. As you can see for this one, it's very, very simple. In this one, I can just take the category label on or off. That's really all I would say is different. These are just like kind of number formatting, text formatting things. So not really um, anything revolutionary there. But the multi-row card is essentially the same, but you can do it with multiple measures or also multiple dimensions. So I'm going to add sales and maybe spectators. And then I'm going to add gender as well. So here I see it first by gender and then underneath for each one what that is. Then over here, I do have uh, the cards thing, which is slightly different. So I can choose certain things within it. Accent bar, this is the bar on the left. This is probably the biggest thing you might want to change in these, uh, as well as the standard stuff like coloring. I'm not going to go through those. So that's these cards. Uh, the other non-chart visual, I guess, is the slicer. So a slicer is kind of a specific type of visual. It's a special type of visual. So here I can say city, and I can get it to be chosen by the user and this filters it. You can also filter in other ways by clicking on things, but this is kind of how you've always done it. And then in the visual things, you get slicer settings. Now, vertical can change to horizontal. As you can see, this is not really accurate because I can't even make that vertical, but that's the legacy of what it was called. And then what's interesting is in selection, you can have single select on or on, and then the user must select one. Or if you turn that on, let me go back to vertical because then you'll see what it's doing a bit better. So this one will change it to these radio buttons. Uh, or I can have select all as an option as well. Select all can be done by clicking on this, but I find this not so easy to see anyway. So in this drop down, you can choose between list and well, drop down, <laughs> accurately named. Uh, or you can also click on here and get a search button. So a search can be useful if you have lots and lots of values as well, as you can imagine. And what is also quite nice is you can now have a hierarchy. So that wouldn't make sense. Country goes above city, and then you can expand. And if you do have a hierarchy, then you can search for hierarchy here and change certain things like the plus or minus, similar to the matrix I showed you earlier. So that is some quite nice features for the slicer. And um, you do have different ways that they show for dates. So if I make date into a slicer, I can get lots more options here. Between will give you the start and the end, or before and after will just give you one of those. We've covered these two. Relative date allows you to choose, for example, last or next, um, and then weeks, calendar weeks, months, etc. And then it, it's useful that it gives you this here. So let me do calendar months. That will mean they end at the end of last month versus months will means they end at the end of today, but it counts back 